because of why I search the deep through endless nights, no time to sleep. The call inside, I can't deny. I'll find the light because of why. Hey everyone, and welcome. When you think of Australia, what comes to mind? Beautiful beaches, sure, but also probably a place where it feels like everything is trying to kill you. But how much of that is actually true? And what's the real story behind its famously deadly animals? Let's get into it. I mean, you've heard the jokes, right? You've seen the memes. It's the big question that hangs over the entire continent. Is everything in Australia really out to get you? It's a land of absolutely stunning beauty, but it's also got this legendary reputation for danger. And, you know, that reputation starts with apex predators like the saltwater crocodile. We're talking about the largest reptile in the world here, a literal living dinosaur that can look just like a floating log right before it explodes from the water. They are the absolute masters of their domain. Then you've got creatures on land, like the notorious Sydney funnelweb spider. When it feels threatened, it rears up into this aggressive pose, showing off fangs that are strong enough to bite right through a fingernail. Yeah, it's a pretty clear and terrifying warning sign. And if you go for a swim, you might run into nearly invisible threats like the box jellyfish. Its sting is incredibly painful and can even be fatal. So yeah, the reputation is definitely built on some seriously intimidating animals. But the real question is, why? Let's get to the bottom of it. Okay, to move past the myths and into the science, we need to talk about a key concept called endemism. Now, it's a fancy word, but all it really means is that a huge, huge portion of Australia's animals are native only to this one continent. You won't find them anywhere else on Earth. And just look at how unique it is. It's staggering. A whopping 94% of its amphibians and 93% of its reptiles live only in Australia. Almost 70% of its mammals are totally unique to the continent, too. Now, this is no coincidence. It's the result of an incredible journey through time. To really understand why, we've got to turn back the clock. I mean, way, way back. The story of Australia's one-of-a-kind wildlife is really a story about geology and deep, profound isolation. So, for millions of years, Australia was connected to other land masses in the giant supercontinent Gondwana. But then, things started to drift apart. Around 100 million years ago, Australia split from Antarctica. And by 50 million years ago, it was completely on its own, a giant floating island continent. And that isolation... That is the most crucial part of this whole story. With no land bridges and thousands of miles of ocean on all sides, the life that was essentially stuck on this new continent was left to evolve on its own terms, cut off from the rest of the world. So welcome to Evolution's Wild Laboratory. In this isolated world, a sort of evolutionary arms race kicked off. With a limited number of species around, the pressure to survive, you know, to eat and avoid being eaten, drove the development of some really extreme tools, especially venom. So what actually happened in this lab? Well, the ancestors of today's venomous snakes were already there. And since there weren't many placental mammals, unique marsupials like kangaroos and koalas evolved to fill every possible role. All this, plus a harsh climate, led to a pretty wild outcome. Australia is the only continent where venomous snakes actually outnumber non-venomous ones in that intense pressure, created some true record breakers. Case in point, the inland taipan. It's widely considered the world's most venomous land snake. And its venom isn't just one simple poison. It's a super complex and powerful cocktail designed to be as efficient as possible. 100. That's the estimated number of adult humans that a single bite could kill. Now, to be clear, the snake isn't evil. It would much rather get away from you than fight. But that incredible power just shows how evolution, left to its own devices, created one of the most effective survival tools on the planet. And this evolutionary pressure cooker wasn't just on land. In the ocean, you get creatures like the beautiful but deadly blue-ringed octopus. It's tiny, often smaller than the palm of your hand. But those bright blue rings, they are not for show. They're a warning sign. 
and it's a warning you really, really want to listen to. This little guy carries enough venom to kill 26 adults. And get this, there is no anti-venom. It's just a stunning example of the contrast between size and power, a perfect product of its unique environment. Other creatures took a different route. Take the stonefish. It combined powerful venom with unbelievable camouflage. It's the world's most venomous fish, and it looks just like a rock on the seafloor. A master of disguise with a very painful, very defensive secret. Okay, so we've seen the science, we've seen the potent venom. It's all pretty intense. But what does this danger actually mean for people? Is the myth of a killer continent real? Let's look at the numbers and put all of this into perspective. Let's start with sharks, the ultimate movie monster, right? Well, if you look at fatal, unprovoked attacks, the numbers are consistently really low, usually just a handful each year. Sure, 2020 was a bit higher with six deaths, but the reality is that fatal encounters are incredibly rare, especially when you think about how many people are in the water every single day. And here is where human cleverness just completely changes the story. Remember that terrifying Sydney funnel web spider? Before 1981, a bite from one could easily be a death sentence. But since an effective anti-venom was developed, not a single person has died from its bite. Zero. Modern medicine has basically neutralized many of these ancient threats. And this is maybe the most important point of all. These animals are not out there hunting people. They bite or they sting when they feel threatened or cornered, or when someone accidentally steps on them. It's all about self-defense, not a malicious attack. They're just trying to survive. Same as us. So, if these legendary, dangerous animals aren't actually the biggest killers, then what is? This brings us to the final, really crucial twist in our story, where we have to rethink what danger really means down under. And this? This is where the entire story just flips on its head. This chart doesn't show the animals that are a threat to us. It shows the biggest threats to Australia's native wildlife. And what are the top culprits? Invasive species, changes we've made to the ecosystem, and agriculture. These are the real killers. We're talking about introduced predators like feral cats and red foxes. We're talking about habitat being lost to farming and cities, and huge changes to the very landscape that these unique animals spent millions of years evolving in. These human-driven pressures are the real threat to the survival of Australia's incredible wildlife. Which really leaves us with one final question to think about. Who is the real danger? It turns out the story isn't about Australia's animals being a threat to us, but about the profound threat we now pose to them. Thanks so much for joining me on this one. If you found this interesting, let me know what you think in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more.